Hello everyone, last time I tried to breed 1000 Neon Tetras, but it didn't work out. I feel like I still need to keep learning and trying. When it comes to breeding Neon Tetras or other Tetras, we shouldn't keep them in a heavily planted tank at the beginning. One of the reasons is that the dense plants make it very difficult to catch them and move them to the breeding tank. Another reason is that the lush plant environment is really suitable for them to breed. They can easily chase and spawn frequently in the planted tank, causing the female fish's stomach to remain flat. Therefore, when we catch them in a crude breeding tank, they have no desire to reproduce. Then, there's the water parameter. Although Wikipedia says that neon tetras need water with a pH of 5.5 for breeding, The water I used for breeding came directly from the chlorine-free tap water of a local stream. I won't comment on the soft water aspect because our local water is already soft. However, it's not acidic. Its pH is around 7. Perhaps lowering the pH can stimulate their breeding desire but it's not an essential step for me. After many attempts, I think that as long as you put the neon tetras that are suitable for breeding in a quiet new environment without any other fish disturbing them, they will breed. Sometimes, even using new water is not necessary. I currently use two methods for breeding neon tetras. The first method is to use small plastic jars. This is convenient because we can just use a small jar. Put a net in it to separate the eggs. And then wrap it with newspaper. However, we need to accurately distinguish between males and females. Because each jar only holds a pair. So to increase the success rate, we need to keep more adult fish. When breeding, you can set up three to four jars. The second method is to use a breeding tank with an isolation box inside. This setup is a bit complicated. But it doesn't require us to accurately distinguish between males and females. With either method, we just need to leave them for a day. If they don't spawn the next day, we can bring them back and try again in three to four days. But usually, the probability of spawning the next day is very high. They usually spawn in the afternoon. I still haven't done a good job of caring for the fry. I don't know if it's because of inbreeding or the light. But the fry I hatched in the last two times all died. Before they could free swim because of deformities. The last time, I avoided inbreeding. The female fish should have been bought from the fish store, while the male fish were previously bred by me. Because there were only six of them, the second method of breeding was used. I received about 300 fertilized eggs. I divided the eggs into six transparent boxes for hatching. Two of them were placed in a completely dark cabinet. 
while the remaining four were placed under the fish tank cabinet, which was dark but also had light exposure. The two boxes in the cabinet all died. While the four boxes under the fish tank cabinet. The left three boxes had basically all survived, but the right one only had a few survivors. So my conclusion. We should place the fry in an environment with dim light and no disturbance. Before the fry free swim, they are very fragile and cannot withstand our constant curiosity to check on them.